Welcome wrestling enthusiasts and connoisseurs to a journey beneath the glitz and glamour with our women's wrestling iceberg. Prepare to plunge into the depths of this iceberg as we peel back the layers of drama, scandal and simmering controversies that have shaped the portrayal and perception of women in the squared circle. From devious exploitation all the way to devastating stories of abuse, this video dares to explore the darker undercurrents and contentious issues that have long lingered beneath the surface of the women's wrestling world. This is the women's wrestling iceberg. For those who are unfamiliar with the iceberg concept, the structure of this video is inspired by the iceberg metaphor, where only a small portion of the iceberg is visible above the waterline, representing the well-known or mainstream information, while the bulk of the iceberg is submerged, symbolizing the hidden or niche details. So basically, as you go further along in the video, the more interesting it will become. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. And we're starting off at the tippity top of the iceberg, tier 6 with our first entry on tier 6 being the rise and fall of Sunny. Sunny was a blonde bombshell who was one of WWE's biggest stars in the 1990s. Some consider her to be WWE's first diva. She was so popular in fact that she was named as the most downloaded celebrity on the internet in the late 1990s. However, while she was with WWE, she was struggling with drug issues, which caused her to get fired. Sunny then had a brief stint in WCW, but left amid rumors that she had been found passed out after injecting Nubane, which is a strong pain medication in the showers. And then from 2001 to 2003, Sunny regularly posed nude for Missy Hyatt's website, Wrestling Vixens, as she dabbled in the world of adult entertainment. She took a lengthy break from the world of nude modeling, but returned back onto the scene in 2016, where she appeared in a hardcore adult video film. She signed a deal to the adult film star company, Vivid Entertainment, although it caused plenty of controversy with WWE as she wore her Hall of Fame ring during the movie. This is one of the least tame things in Sunny's story though, as she has a lengthy track record with crime. Her spat of criminal charges began in 2012 when she was still very much part of the wrestling scene. This included 5 arrests within a 4 week period that year, where she was handcuffed for disorderly conduct, 3rd degree burglary, and 3 counts of violating a protective order. And over the years, Sunny has had numerous arrests and incarcerations for driving under the influence, but there have also been spells of imprisonment for a number of other crimes. Like she was arrested for threatening to kill her partner with a pair of scissors, then there was a time when she was accused of making terror threats in January of 2022. The list goes on and on. However, in March of 2022, she did something that will alter her life forever. While Sunny was driving under the influence of alcohol and marijuana, she slammed into the back of a 75-year-old's car, causing the man to die. She had a blood alcohol content of 0.280, which is 3.5 times higher than the legal limit of 0.08 set by Florida law. She was also driving without a valid license. All of this caused Sunny to be jailed for 17 years for her involvement in the deadly car crash that killed a 75-year-old. And up next we have the leader wardrobe malfunction. The Matt Hardy, Edge and Lita scandal in professional wrestling unfolded in 2005. Matt Hardy and Lita were in a real life relationship but Lita had an affair with fellow wrestler Edge. Matt Hardy discovered this and publicly shared his emotional reaction, leading to a highly publicized and controversial storyline involving all three individuals in WWE. The scandal blurred the lines between fiction and reality, creating a significant buzz and drama within the wrestling community and among fans. One of the most infamous segments from the storyline was the live celebration, where Edge and Lita appeared to fornicate right in the middle of the ring, in front of thousands of fans. During this segment, the fans went wild as it was a very shocking moment on television during that time. However, things didn't go as planned since Lita's breasts got exposed to the camera during the segment. It was one of the most jaw-dropping malfunctions in pro wrestling history. And up next, we have Nia Jax, Unsafe Worker. Nia Jax's return to WWE in 2023 reignited the debate surrounding her controversial reputation as an unsafe worker. While professional wrestling inherently involves a degree of risk and physicality, the distinction with Nia Jax lies in the frequency and severity of the injuries suffered by her fellow wrestlers. Nia Jax has injured many wrestlers but the most significant is Becky Lynch in 2018, when Nia Jax delivered a stiff punch to Becky's face which broke her nose and caused Becky to get a concussion. While the Becky Lynch incident had somewhat of a positive outcome for her because she became a bigger star, the same cannot be said for others who have faced Nia Jax in the ring. In 2017, during a match with Bayley, Nia's raw power came into play once again when she forcefully tossed Bayley out of the ring. 
The result was Bailey suffering a separated shoulder, which forced her to miss her scheduled match against Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam that year. And also in a tag match that included Ember Moon, she injured Ember Moon. Nia's reckless actions led to Ember Moon's husband expressing concern on social media, calling Nia an unsafe moron in a now-deleted tweet. Another one of Nia Jax's victims was Zelina Vega, who got a concussion after Nia Jax threw her over the top rope in a women's battle royale at WWE Evolution. In 2020, Nia's reckless actions also caused Kairi Sane to collide with steel steps, resulting in a nasty head injury for Kairi Sane. And also in 2017, during a match with Charlotte Flair, Nia Jax executed a move that resulted in Charlotte landing awkwardly on her head. Another controversial moment occurred in 2020 when Nia Jax's forceful actions during a match led to a rumored injury to Mandy Rose. And up next we have Woman. Nancy Benoit's achievements in the wrestling industry are often overlooked because of what Chris Benoit did to her, their son and himself during the last weekend of their lives. However, she was one of the most influential women in wrestling during the 90s. Nancy Benoit gained recognition in various promotions like WCW as woman. She was often cast in the role of a valet, accompanying her husband at the time, Kevin Sullivan, to the ring, where a captivating presence added depth to his villainous persona. Kevin Sullivan essentially booked his own divorce to Nancy when he paired Benoit and Woman together, causing Woman to leave Sullivan in real life for Chris Benoit. Unfortunately, Nancy Benoit slash Woman's life was cut short in 2007 due to the horrific events involving her husband Chris Benoit. Despite the dark shadow cast by this tragedy, Woman slash Nancy Benoit's contributions to the wrestling world remain an integral part of its history, and she will be remembered for her talent, charisma, and impact on the sport. And up next, we have the Act Yasukawa vs. Yoshiko shoot. This shoot incident happened in stardom between Aki Yasukawa and Yoshiko in 2015. Basically, what happened was Yoshiko was apparently jealous of the younger act's growing popularity, and this caused them to have the most brutal shoot of all time, where Yoshiko absolutely obliterated Act despite Act trying to fight back. Aki Yasukawa was left with a broken cheekbone, fractured orbital bones, a broken nose, and a concussion. She had to get surgery for these injuries and spent some time in the hospital to heal. This incident also caused Act to temporarily retire from wrestling and she only returned to the ring six years later. This incident caused a lot of backlash for Yoshiko, which caused her to get fired from stardom, but she shockingly returned to the promotion five years later in 2020 to a polarizing response. And up next we have Brie Bella wardrobe malfunction. During one of the episodes of The Miz TV, Brie Bella had an awkward wardrobe malfunction, and that too without even wrestling. During the segment, The Miz hosted the Bella Twins as well as a few other diva superstars from WWE. Both Nikki and Brie Bella had to clap for the upcoming WWE divas. Unfortunately, Brie Bella's breast got exposed on camera. Later, she apologized and clarified that it was due to the humidity that her tape fell off. And up next, we have Alondra Blaze throws the WWE Women's Championship in the garbage in WCW. In the early 1990s, Alondra Blaze was one of women's wrestling's top stars, and in late 1995, Alondra Blaze was the WWE Women's Champion, but at the time, WWE were facing financial troubles, so she was released from her contract as a cost-cutting measure, but this was clearly a problem because she was the Women's Champion. Immediately after she got cut from the company, WCW's Eric Bischoff called her and convinced her to drop the WWE Women's Championship in the trash in WCW, and so she did just that. Obviously, this was all a work and she got the championship back right after. She had to return it to WWE because it was not her property. And up next, we have the Mandy Rose firing. Mandy Rose was a runner-up on the WWE show Tough Enough in 2015, and subsequently, she signed a 5-year contract with WWE. But over the years, she struggled to find solid footing on the main roster before a return to NXT in July of 2021. In NXT, she had a 413-day reign as the WWE NXT Women's Champion, but her reign abruptly came to an end, as she was released from her contract while she was still champion. As it turned out, WWE released Mandy Rose from her contract due to the adult content that she had been posting on her personal fan time page, where she exposed her breasts. It ultimately all worked out for Rose in the end, as by the end of the month that she got fired, she was pulling in over $1 million from her fan time page, where she was posting lewd content. And up next you have Mae Young gives birth to a hand. Mae Young is regarded as one of the biggest names in the history of women's professional wrestling, and she had a long and illustrious career filled with many championships. After a couple of decades out of the business, Mae Young made her return to professional wrestling when she signed with WWE when she was in her 70s. 
While she was in WWE, she got paired with Mark Henry, who had a sexual chocolate gimmick, which saw him become more of a ladies man. And so in one of the most outrageous storylines in WWE history, Mark Henry impregnated the 70 plus year old Mae Young. And when the baby was born, all that emerged was a full size bloody adult hand, and everyone was left shocked. And up next we have China. China is one of the most recognizable women in wrestling history, and from 1997 to 2001, she broke multiple barriers and reached impressive accolades in the WWF. She held the women's championship, was the first woman to participate in the Royal Rumble, and became the only woman to hold the Intercontinental Championship. By the end of 2001 though, she was out of the WWF, vacating the women's title along the way. It was from this point that many of China's darkest moments began impacting her life. China then got involved in the adult video industry, and her and Xbox's adult video dropped in 2004, with the title being One Night in China. After a 2004 debut in adult videos, China would be featured in four other adult films, with the final coming in 2012 when she played a parody of the She-Hulk in a film named Avengers Triple X. China was really struggling with addiction as well, and her struggles were captured in the public eye. She was a part of the show Celebrity Rehab, appearing as a member of the cast for season 1, with alcohol listed as her addiction. Her last days on planet Earth consisted of a cycle of people trying to help her get out of her addiction. Despite not employing China anymore, WWE stepped in and offered to pay for her rehab, but China turned it down because she was very paranoid about the WWE. And in April of 2016, China was found dead in her home at the age of 46. Her death was ruled as accidental due to consuming alcohol and prescription drugs like oxycodone, Xanax, and muscle relaxers. And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 5, with our first entry on tier 5 being Hana Kimura. Hana Kimura was a young bright prospect in the Japanese wrestling scene, wrestling for the women's wrestling promotion Stardom where she was a big deal. She was so popular in fact that she joined the Japanese reality TV show Terrace House, which was broadcast to millions on Netflix. On this reality TV show, there was a scene in which fans found her distasteful, so they sent a slew of online hate towards her, telling her to take her own life and much more. This affected her mental health greatly. Terrace House ignored her deteriorating mental health and actually painted her more as a villain to the public, which caused the online hate to worsen. Hana couldn't take the nasty stream of messages and caved into the hate by taking her own life at just 22 years old in 2020. Three men were arrested for bullying her online and ended up getting fines for their actions but the fines were nowhere near enough, with the lowest fine being a measly $80. To this day, Hana's mother Kyoko Kimura continues to seek justice for Hana. And up next we have Sasha Banks wardrobe malfunction. In 2019, Sasha Banks teamed up with Bayley to face off against Natalia and Ronda Rousey. During this match, Sasha Banks had a bad wardrobe malfunction but not through fault of her own. Natalia picked Banks up in a powerbomb position which made Sasha's shorts come down, exposing her backside to millions at home watching. This caused the feed for WWE Raw to cut out, with a black screen going up for most of the country for 7 seconds. And up next we have Tessa Blanchard Racism. Tessa Blanchard was one of the most promising young talents in the wrestling industry in the late 2010s. She seemed destined for greatness and it seemed like it was only a matter of time before AEW or WWE would sign her. She was making a name for herself in intergender matches in TNA slash Impact Wrestling and was on course to become the first ever woman to hold the men's world championship of a major US wrestling promotion. But then just one day before she faced off against Sammy Callahan at Samiversary for the title, she tweeted something that will alter her career forever. Blanchard posted a tweet urging women to support each other. This triggered a wave of backlash and accusatory tweets from prominent female voices in the wrestling industry. There were multiple accusations of bullying, but the most notable accusation was when Tessa was accused of spitting in a black woman's face in Japan and using racial slurs against her. Many other wrestlers who were in Japan and saw this incident corroborated the story. Blanchard denied these accusations and no concrete evidence was presented against her. However, the damage was done and her wrestling career started to decline. Tessa Blanchard managed to overcome the storm and achieve a historic milestone in women's wrestling by defeating Sammy Callahan to win the men's world championship. However, her triumph was short-lived as the pandemic struck, causing a global shutdown. Despite being the reigning champion, Blanchard did not make appearances on Impact TV during this time. On top of not being able to appear on TV, she failed to submit her promos for a taped segment and TNA lost confidence in her and requested that she relinquish the title. However, Tessa refused to do this and consequently, in June of 2020, TNA decided to terminate Blanchard's contract and she has not returned to a major US promotion since. 
And up next, we have Sonya Deville attempted kidnapping. Sonya Deville signed with WWE in 2015, but in 2020, she had one of the most scariest experiences of her life. In August of 2020, a South Carolina man was arrested for attempting to kidnap Sonya Deville after he broke into her home with a knife, mace, and duct tape. Philip Thomas, who was 24 years old, had allegedly been planning to take Sonya Deville hostage for more than 8 months, and he stalked her on social media for years. Thomas Phillips drove from South Carolina to the community of Lutz, north of Tampa, and parked his car at a church near Sonya's home. He cut a hole in the resident's patio screen and waited for Sonya and her guest WWE superstar Mandy Rose to go to bed. And at 2.43am, Thomas opened the home sliding glass door, activating an alarm which prompted Sonya Deville to call 911. Thankfully, Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose managed to get out of there, and when deputies arrived, Thomas told them that he'd driven from out of state with the goal of taking Sonya hostage. He was later charged and pleaded guilty to attempted kidnapping, aggravated stalking, and armed burglary, and was sentenced to 15 years in jail. And up next, we have the Paige Leaks. Paige is one of the most important women in WWE history, and she was one of the women who were an integral part of WWE breaking out of the diva era. However, 2017 was not a good year for Paige. She had a nasty drug habit and was battling alcoholism. On top of that, her neck was giving out on her, causing her to have surgery on it. She was on the cusp of getting fired by WWE, and then everything got much worse for her as her private videos of her fornicating leaked. The source of these videos was Paige's ex-boyfriend, Brad Maddox, who had taken all of these videos fornicating with Paige. Maddox claimed that he was hacked, but Paige believed that the leaked videos were a part of some sort of plot of revenge. One of her colleagues in WWE, fellow wrestler Xavier Woods, was in one of the X-rated videos where he and another unidentified man were taking turns fornicating with Paige. All of this completely destroyed Paige as her hair started falling out due to stress, she developed anorexia, and she fell into a deep depression, causing her to even contemplate taking her own life. Luckily, everything turned out fine for Paige, but those X-rated videos are still up and will forever haunt her because you can't delete something from the internet. And up next, we have Kid Grabs Natalia's chest. Circa 2014, Natalia was scheduled to wrestle in a match against Aksana, but something happened before the match that raised the eyebrows of viewers. As Natalia was making her way down to the ring in a jovial babyface manner, she posed against the barricade and a young fan grabbed a handful of her chest. This incident happened in a flash and Natalia thought nothing of it, even giving the kid a high five right after. Even though there was probably no ill will behind what the kid did, it was still insane to see this happen on TV. And up next we have Vince McMahon making Trish Stratus bark like a dog. One of the most uncomfortable in-ring segments in WWE history saw Trish Stratus calling Vince McMahon to the ring after he humiliated her the previous week by having Stephanie cover her in dirty mop water. After Vince comes out, Trish surprises everyone by actually apologizing to Vince and begging him to let her make everything up to him. Vince is skeptical and wants Trish to prove to him how she's sorry. At this point, he orders her to get on her hands and knees like a dog, before insisting that she bark into the microphone. Vince then tells Trish that he's seen her on all fours before, and that if she's really sorry, she'll take off her clothes. Trish then strips down to her underwear and Vince orders her to remove her bra too, but just before she's about to drop it, Vince stops her, and in a move that makes Vince simultaneously a face and a heel, he spares Trish further humiliation by telling her that the fans have seen enough of her. Vince covers her up with a jacket and Trish says that he has no idea how far she'd degrade herself for the right cause, and Vince sends her back to the locker room. The whole 10 minute segment makes most fans skin crawl, and it's an embarrassing reminder of Vince's ego run amok. And up next we have Emma wins match by accident. In 2015, Emma was part of NXT, and she had a fatal 4 way match against Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Dana Brooke. During this match, Emma hit Becky Lynch with a move and pinned her for the 1 2 3, but that wasn't supposed to happen as Charlotte was the one who was supposed to win the match. After Emma's pinfall victory, Charlotte had a look of rage plastered onto her face. Because of Becky Lynch's accidental failure to kick out of the pin, Emma took the win home, and it was highly probable that the four of them got a word from the higher ups after the incident. And up next we have Alicia Fox wrestling drunk. Alicia Fox joined WWE in 2006 and she was a member of the Ohio Valley wrestling roster, before jumping ship to the main roster where she made her name for herself. However, Alicia Fox's time on the main roster wasn't so smooth as she was on thin ice several times for her misbehavior. The worst of her misbehavior came in 2019 where she showed up for a live event intoxicated under the influence of alcohol. 
she was scheduled to wrestle a match and Aunt Anderson was the agent for the match that she was involved in. Despite her condition, Aunt Anderson allowed her to compete and WWE Chairman Vince McMahon was furious when he found this out. This led to Aunt Anderson being fired from WWE despite working for the company for almost 20 years. And up next we have Fabulous Moolah. Fabulous Moolah was a legendary and pioneering professional women's wrestler. She gained prominence in the wrestling world during the mid 20th century and became one of the most successful and enduring female wrestlers of her time. Fabulous Moolah basically had a monopoly over women's wrestling. Fabulous Moolah had a wrestling school but the trainees claimed that Moolah didn't actually train the wrestlers at her wrestling school. According to the women at Moolah's wrestling school, Moolah had other female wrestlers within her camp train the new recruits and these women did not get paid for their additional work as trainers. It was also claimed that all women at Moolah's wrestling school had to sign a contract that allowed Moolah to function as their booker and receive 25% of their booking fee. The training lasted 6 months and took place up to 5 hours per day inside a wrestling ring inside a barn that lacked heating and air conditioning or fans. The women in her training school had to pay $1,500 per month in order to train at Moolah's wrestling school and that $1,500 per month in the 1970s would be over $10,000 per month in today's money. Obviously, the trainees couldn't pay this and they went into debt at Moolah's training camp, creating a ripe environment for abuse. Moolah controlled their lives and even after they left the wrestling school, despite the trainees resting and taking bookings, they wouldn't make any money because they had to pay off their debt to Moolah. This is not even the worst of it all as various female wrestlers have come forward with stories accusing Moolah of being a pimp who often provided various wrestling promoters with unsuspecting female wrestlers that will be used as objects. Moolah basically rented out her female trainees in bulk so that the trainers and male wrestlers could fornicate with them. The women sent on these tours were not told of this arrangement ahead of time and those who refused to fornicate with wrestlers and promoters were then graped. On top of this, the women were often given hard drugs and made into an addict as an intentional attempt by Moolah to gain control of them. Some of the female trainees also had to engage in fornication with Moolah in order to get on her good side. This was very ironic because Moolah would often be homophobic but then engage in lesbianism. All of these allegations managed to soil the reputation and legacy of fabulous Moolah. And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 4 with our first entry on tier 4 being Jordan Grace Royds. Jordan Grace is one of the most prominent women's wrestlers in TNA today and she's a 3 time knockouts world champion. However, during late 2022 and early 2023, her body underwent a significant change in about 6 months. She packed on significant muscle whilst losing a considerable amount of weight in such a quick time. The reason for this is because she got into professional powerlifting and bodybuilding, two industries that are notoriously known for their rampant juicing. This led to fans speculating that Jordan Grace is on the good juice. What doesn't help Jordan Grace's case is a significant change to her voice. I used to love them and then I started getting hurt. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I don't like them anymore but... Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably already know that UFC 289 is returning to Canada and the women are headlining. And up next we have Dawn Marie, Wardrobe Malfunction. Dawn Marie was quite a talented wrestler during her time in WWE. She was involved in a very popular rivalry with Tori Wilson that entertained fans throughout. However, most fans remember her for one of the most embarrassing wardrobe malfunctions of all time. During their storyline, she faced Tori Wilson at the pay-per-view Judgment Day 2004 which had this malfunctioning incident. During her fight, at one point in time, her tights tore and her entire bottom came loose. The fans were just shocked to see her exposed like that. Nevertheless, Marie continued and completed the whole match despite the malfunction and the fans credited her for her dedication toward the sport. And up next we have Gail Kim eliminates herself from Battle Royale. In 2011, Gail Kim was upset with her role in WWE as she didn't feel like she was being utilized correctly. She was probably right in that regard but what she did to show her displeasure was highly unprofessional. In a diva battle royale, she was supposed to be eliminated early in the match but rather than allowing someone to eliminate her, she decided to roll out the ring on her own accord. It wasn't completely noticeable as it happened live but many outlets picked up on it and it became big news. Gail Kim subsequently asked for her release and it was granted but she didn't go out with the class and dignity that she had displayed so often before. And up next we have Mickey James trash bag. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there were various periods of time when WWE released large groups of talent even though they were making record-breaking profit during this time. 
People criticized WWE heavily for all of these firings, and in addition, many were also angered to learn how management had treated wrestlers who were released. The most infamous incident of this was when Mickey James received her belongings from WWE in a trash bag with her name on it. Mickey James took to social media to show how the company sent her her things, and she captioned the photo in a sarcastic manner. Simply put, it was a blatant showing of disrespect towards James by WWE. Because she had worked in the company for years and was a multi-time champion in the promotion, who deserved more respect. Naturally, WWE faced a lot of backlash for this. And up next we have Rosa Mendez wardrobe malfunction. Rosa Mendez might have not been a very popular name in WWE, but she was under contract with WWE for a long time. She was never used well or had any good storylines with another wrestler though. However, fans remember her for her infamous wardrobe malfunction that took place back in the day. During a match, Rosa's bottoms were entirely pulled down, exposing her bare ass to the camera. This was definitely very embarrassing for Rosa. And up next we have Emma fired and rehired in hours. In 2014, WWE superstar Emma was arrested as she was accused of stealing an iPad case from a Walmart store. This prompted WWE to fire her immediately on the same day that it happened. But after careful investigation by the police, it was discovered that she paid for the store items through a self-checkout machine except for the said tablet case that was improperly scanned, meaning that it was all just one big misunderstanding. Despite WWE releasing her for the pettiest of reasons, they rehired her just a few hours later, in probably the quickest rehiring in WWE history. And up next we have Caitlyn Wynn's Battle Royale by accident. In August of 2012, WWE superstar Caitlyn competed in a women's battle royale match that was for number one contendership to the Divas title. Eve was actually supposed to win this match, however due to a botched spot, Caitlyn actually ended up winning the match. The Divas champion Layla and the supposed to be number one contender Eve were flabbergasted at the outcome and Caitlyn just had to roll with it even though she was shocked that it happened. Upon walking to the back, Caitlyn was convinced that Vince McMahon was going to fire her on the spot, but instead she got back to Vince McMahon laughing hysterically, and it all got sorted out once Caitlyn was forced to forfeit the title shot after a storyline injury. She would eventually win the title 5 months later. And up next we have Thunder Rosa sandbagging. On the 13th June 2022 edition of AEW's Dynamite, Thunder Rosa and Marina Shafir faced off against one another, but their match was remembered for all the wrong reasons. During this match, Thunder Rosa sandbagged Shafir and was uncooperative with her leading to the match looking very unprofessional. Several AEW women's wrestlers were quick to like tweets chastising Thunder Rosa about this incident, thus adding more fuel to the fire. Rosa didn't shy away from the negative reaction and she even came out wearing a t-shirt that said sandbagging. And up next we have Asuka vs Minoru Suzuki. In 2014, on Asuka's self-produced show, she booked herself in a match, teaming with pro wrestling Noah mainstay Noamichi Marafuji vs Joshi legend Maiko Satomura and the most notorious man in all of Japanese pro wrestling, Minoru Suzuki. The match begins as normal and everything is standard, but then whenever Asuka and Suzuki are wrestling, it's a little bit stiff. Nothing too crazy, but still stiff nonetheless. But then almost 20 minutes into the match, in the end stretch, things start to cross the line. Asuka tries to fight Suzuki once more and once again, he no-sells it. She eventually starts to get some offense on him and he seems affected by her moves. This is a big mistake though as Suzuki gets up and gives her one of the worst headbutts given from a man to a woman in wrestling. Suzuki then proceeds to drag her lifeless body around by her hair like she's a ragdoll and proceeds to slap her while he's on top of her. This was truly uncomfortable to watch as you could tell Asuka was out of it. This whole incident was planned though as it was a work shoot, seeing that Asuka booked this match. Asuka asked Suzuki to go as hard as he could with her and not to hold back during this match. And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 3, with our first entry on tier 3 being Hikaru Shida racism. Hikaru Shida was given the unenviable task of carrying the AEW Women's Championship during the peak of the pandemic. During this period though, Shida did a fantastic job and was rewarded with a newer, bigger championship on the final Dynamite before Double or Nothing 2021. This was a very special moment but it was tainted by Spanish commentator Willie Urbina who marked Shida's accent in a racist way. Naturally, this caused an uproar on Twitter and Urbina was quickly fired as a result. And up next we have Fan Slaps Alexa Bliss's ass. 
Sometimes fans get too excited to interact with their favorite WWE stars and this could lead to weird or embarrassing moments, like what happened to Alexa Bliss in August of 2017. After finishing their match at a WWE live event, Nia Jax draped Alexa Bliss over her shoulder and started walking towards backstage. Bliss had her head down and probably had no idea where she was heading, but just as Jax turned around the ramp, a young kid ended up slapping Alexa Bliss on her backside. A year later in an interview, Bliss said that she and Nia Jax laughed off the incident backstage. Although it may appear as a harmless thing, it's never okay to touch wrestlers inappropriately and was an embarrassing situation for Alexa Bliss to be in. And up next we have Dawn Marie fired while pregnant. The changes to WWE throughout the years have seen some positive growth when it comes to their worst moments in the past. Like when former ECW and WWE star Dawn Marie witnessed the worst side of the wrestling business when she was released during her pregnancy in 2005. WWE has always used the independent contractor clause to their advantage, but this was a new low. Vince McMahon showed zero employee loyalty or compassion to Marie for not being able to perform in the ring and it led to her release. This was considered to be one of the most controversial firings in wrestling history, leading to public outrage, and many wrestlers outside of WWE spoke up for Marie since she was a beloved figure in the industry and was being treated unfairly. Because of her unceremonious release, Dawn Marie decided to take WWE to court after they fired her. WWE and Marie did reach a settlement agreement outside of court with Vince McMahon reportedly paying a very heavy price for releasing her while she was pregnant. And up next we have Rebby Sky and Awesome Kong backstage fight. The wife of Matt Hardy, Rebby Sky, competed in Impact Wrestling and she was not always popular with her co-workers. One time Awesome Kong went off on Rebby Sky and things went way too far. The two women's wrestlers had beef, and backstage, according to many witnesses, Awesome Kong physically assaulted Sky by grabbing her around the neck. Security personnel intervened, restraining Kong and putting an end to the altercation. What makes this entire situation more distressing was the fact that Rebby and Matt Hardy's young son was present in proximity to the incident, adding an element of concern and potential danger to the situation. Because of all of this and other issues, Awesome Kong was released from TNA. And up next we have Io Sky smuggles drugs into Japan. Io Sky is one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time and she is currently in WWE where she has become a multi-time women's champion. Io Sky used to wrestle in the Japanese promotion Stardom and things always went so rosy for her as in 2012 she faced an incident that could have ended her career. At this time she was dating the wrestler Nosawa and while they were wrestling in Mexico, a fan gifted them two portraits which they brought back to Japan. But at the Japanese airport, customs found marijuana was hidden inside these paintings and they were arrested. Io Sky spent a few weeks in jail and after she was released from jail, she did a press conference where she maintained her innocence and she also revealed her breakup with Nosawa. The public prosecutor's office later decided not to press charges against her as just a few days after Io's press conference, a wrestler named Takia Sugi made a confession that he was actually the one who planted marijuana on Io and her then boyfriend Nosawa. Takio Sugi said that he did this hoping to get a contract extension from AAA, as promised by Masahiro Hayashi, who booked Japanese talents in AAA. Hayashi hated Io's then boyfriend Nasawa for some reason, so he asked Takio Sugi to plant the weed on Io and her boyfriend. Takio Sugi was blackballed from the wrestling industry and Io's reputation was restored. And up next we have Caitlyn Wardrobe Malfunction. Back in the day, Caitlyn and AJ Lee had a great storyline. They turned from best friends to bitter enemies. During Caitlyn and AJ Lee's feud, Caitlyn had an embarrassing wardrobe malfunction. During an episode of Raw, Caitlyn cornered AJ Lee and tried to beat her up. Caitlyn went berserk as she kept attacking Lee and in a shocking moment during their altercation, Caitlyn's boob popped out of her top, exposing her nip on live TV. It was quite an instant moment but it was still caught on camera. Later, Caitlyn joked about it and asked fans to get over that malfunction. And up next we have the Raka Khan lawsuit. Raka Khan arrived in professional wrestling as part of the 2005 WWE Diva Search. After a brief stint under a WWE developmental deal, Raka Khan signed with TNA Wrestling in 2008 but would part ways with the company the following year. And from there her life spiraled downwards. In 2019, she was charged with interfering with child custody and aggravated kidnapping. At one point she was even on the run and was part of El Paso's most wanted list. Raka Khan was clearly losing her marbles and in October of 2022, she filed a lawsuit claiming that many wrestlers were part of a conspiracy against her in relation to her ongoing case. In her lawsuit, she named wrestlers like The Rock, The Miz, Maurice, Nikki Bella, the late Chris Benoit, Mark Jindrak, 
the National Wrestling Alliance, Jim Cornette, Mick Foley, and many other entities and people that had nothing to do with her, like Michael Jordan and various police departments. Rokokan's lawsuit alleges that the defendants all conspired to kidnap the plaintiff and her children. The 48-page lawsuit shows Rocker Khan seeking $3 billion in damages. Khan also cited that the terroristic tactics, actions, and events by all the defendants have caused her to be unable to gain employment and has destroyed her professional wrestling career. And up next, we have Charlotte Flair arrested. Charlotte Flair is one of the most popular women's wrestlers of all time, and she is a 14-time WWE Women's Champion and the daughter of Hall of Famer Ric Flair. However, before Charlotte Flair began wrestling, she was arrested and charged with assault on a police officer. According to the police reports, concerned neighbors called for help when they heard a commotion coming from the Flair home. Officers found Ric Flair, Charlotte Flair, and her boyfriend in the home, and from the looks of it, Charlotte Flair's boyfriend had gotten into a fight with Ric Flair as Ric was bloodied and bruised. Ric Flair declined to file charges in the case, but Charlotte was accused of kicking an officer, which caused the officer to use a taser gun on her. Charlotte, who was 22 at the time, was charged with assault on a law enforcement officer and resisting arrest. And up next, we have Rich Swan beats up Sue Young. Sue Young is a professional wrestler most known for her time in TNA slash Impact Wrestling. Sue Young married fellow professional wrestler Rich Swan in 2017, but merely six months after their wedding, it appeared that the couple were having problems after Rich Swan beat up Sue Young. This saw Rich Swan being arrested for false imprisonment and domestic battery. He was working for WWE at the time, and WWE has a zero tolerance policy when it comes to domestic violence, so they were forced to suspend Swan, who later negotiated his release from the company. The couple later reconciled, and since Rich Swan was facing heavy backlash for his domestic violence against Sue Young, Sue Young hopped to his defense and encouraged fans not to hop on him for beating her up. And up next, we have Sable sues the WWE. In 1996, Sable made her WWE debut, and she became well known for her roles in graphic narratives. Her reign as a top star was short-lived due to her falling out with the organization. In 1999, she abruptly left WWE, and shortly thereafter, she filed a $110 million lawsuit citing SA and unsafe working conditions. In her suit against the company, the former women's champion claimed that she was asked to compete topless against Deborah McMichael on Raw but turned down the offer. She also claimed that during her three-year run with the company, she suffered SA at the hands of Vince McMahon. During this lawsuit, Vince McMahon countersued her and she reduced the amount that she was seeking in damages and they eventually settled out of court in August of 1999. And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 2. With our and up next we have Stephanie McMahon, wardrobe malfunction. Stephanie McMahon has been loved and hated by a lot of WWE fans due to her on-screen personality, but nobody can deny that she has been one of the best talkers on the mic in the industry and has given innumerable memorable moments. Very few fans know that Stephanie experienced a wardrobe malfunction back during the Attitude Era. During one of her on-screen arguments with Triple H, things got physical, so Triple H set her up for a pedigree in the course of events, and as she bent over with her arms locked around her, her breast came out and her nip got exposed. She quickly fixed it, but it was too late. Stephanie said later that it was one of the most embarrassing moments of her WWE career. And up next, we have Bull Nakano fired for Coke. Bull Nakano is a legend in women's wrestling, and she's a former WWF women's champion known for her iconic hairdo and face paint. Bull Nakano's WWF career ended in an unfortunate way as she was fired because she was caught and arrested for having a small bag of Coke in her possession. Nakano then returned to Japan, but her troubles didn't let up there though, as she fell into alcoholism. But a few years after she retired, she was hospitalized for cirrhosis of the liver. According to her own admission, the disease was brought on by her years of alcohol abuse. Nakano said that she was suffering from hair loss, a swollen stomach, and flaky skin, but ignored the symptoms for years. She refused medical attention and hid her symptoms from her husband, family, and friends as she continued to drink. Nakano owned her own bar in Japan and had easy access to liquor. She finally couldn't hide her problems, and after her husband insisted that she check into a hospital, she begrudgingly did. She stated that it is difficult for her to imagine her life without drinking alcohol, but insists that she has not had a drink since being released from the hospital. And up next, we have Charmel vs. Jenna Moraska. This match was infamously awarded minus 5 stars by Dave Meltzer. Charmel vs. Jenna Moraska has gone down in history as an exercise in how not to work a wrestling match. To be completely honest, the best thing about this match was Jenna Moraska's entrance. 
Although certainly not a legitimate professional wrestler, Charmel was made to look perfectly at home in the ring by the stunningly poor performance of Jenna Maraska, a reality star with precisely no wrestling experience. Maraska's offense consisted of potentially the most pathetic slaps ever seen in any form of entertainment. Thankfully, the match wasn't a long one, although it was still longer than it had any right to be, and ended with Maraska's Ali, Awesome Kong, easily destroying Charmel and allowing the former Survivor winner to pick up the win. She celebrated on Kong's shoulders, but dealt another unconvincing slap to the fan favorite for not holding her up there long enough. Kong then dragged her to the mat and hit her with a big body splash. Jenna somehow managed to make this look garbage too. And up next we have Luna Vachon. For wrestling fans of the 1990s, Luna Vachon was an unforgettable figure. With her growling voice, mohawk and other radical hairstyles, black attire and spikes and faux tattoos on her face, she cut a striking image completely unlike any other woman active in wrestling at that time. Moreover, she was actually a well-trained wrestler, part of the Vachon wrestling family. The character that Luna played on TV was notoriously very chaotic, but it was also very similar to how she was in real life. Luna Vachon had a lot of demons, and her former spouse Gangrel cited that drugs played an increasingly prominent role in her life, with her use of coke and E driving a wedge between the two, as well as between her and her other friends. Vachon's substance abuse continued throughout the years, and WWE even stepped in in 2009 and offered her rehab, but unfortunately, rehab was not enough for her as after she got out, she ended up passing in 2010 at the age of 48 in what was evaluated to be an accidental drug overdose. And up next, we have Fan Kisses Nikki Bella by Force. When Nikki Bella was making her entrance on an episode of Superstars, she had a peculiar interaction with a fan. While she was making her way down to the ring, a certain fan grabbed Nikki Bella close and planted a kiss square on her cheek. While this was wildly inappropriate, it's worth mentioning that by the looks of it, the fan who did this had Down syndrome. And so Nikki Bella didn't seem too bothered by what had happened and she even fanned her face to feign arousal. And up next we have Deborah and Stone Cold Steve Austin Domestic Violence. Debra was a professional wrestling valet and professional wrestler, best known for her time with WCW between 1995 and 1998 as Queen Debra and with the WWF between 1998 and 2002. During her time in the WWF, she met Stone Cold Steve Austin and they married each other in 2000. However, their marriage would soon crumble apart. In 2002, Austin was arrested for beating up his then wife at their home in Texas. She told police that Austin hit her several times after an argument. The police report stated that Austin's wife had a noticeable black eye. Austin was then charged for domestic violence. He would plead no contest to the charges and would be given a $1,000 fine and 80 hours of community service. During that time, Austin filed for divorce from Deborah, with the divorce being finalized in February of 2003. At the time that this was all going on, Steve Austin was arguably the biggest star in WWE, and in order for this not to get out, Vince McMahon made Austin's wife Deborah sign a non-disclosure agreement so that she didn't reveal that Steve Austin had committed violence towards her. And up next we have the original screw job. In the mid-1980s, Wendy Richter was a vital part of the earliest years of Vince McMahon's plans for national expansion and was seemingly said to be the female Hulk Hogan in terms of marketing and merchandising. Even though Wendy Richter was becoming a bigger and bigger star every day, she refused to sign a new contract with the WWF because of money issues and she wanted a better contract with better terms, of which Vince McMahon would not agree with. Because of Wendy Richter wanting more equal pay, she essentially got screwed out of the title by Vince McMahon and Fabulous Moolah. While the Montreal Screwjob was seen as a defining moment within the industry, the Madison Square Garden Screwjob involving Wendy Richter in 1985 was the original Screwjob. In this match, Richter went in as the Women's World Champion, and she was meant to go up against a wrestler called the Spider Lady, who was a female wrestler in a mask. However, the real Spider Lady was replaced by Fabulous Moolah, and Richter only found out about this while she was wrestling Fabulous Moolah under the mask. Fabulous Moolah under the Spider Lady mask would then trap Richter in a small package and despite Richter kicking out at one, the referee counted the three count and declared a new women's champion, much to Richter's surprise. After the match, Richter immediately left the arena and she left WWE subsequently. And up next we have Joshi Deaths in the Ring. Plum Mariko was a Japanese women's wrestler who wrestled for the JWP Joshi Pororosu promotion. She was a technical wizard and submission magician. 
Mariko had suffered a number of concussions throughout her career, and during her final days, it was clear that she wasn't 100% healthy. She competed in a match in 1997, and during the course of this match, her opponent delivered a Liger bomb to her, and she was supposed to kick out, but she just laid on the mat, and the referee had no other choice but to make the three count. Mariko was still motionless on the mat, and the crew immediately realized she was seriously hurt. She was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was in a coma and a few hours later, she was pronounced dead at 29 years old. It turned out that she didn't die from the Liger bomb that she took in her last match, but a considerable amount of brain trauma throughout her career. Plum Marika was the first wrestler in Japan to die in the ring, and the second was another Joshi wrestler called Emiko Kado. Emiko Kado was a young up-and-coming women's wrestler who wrestled for the promotion Arsian. She made her debut against Joshi legend Aya Kong in 1999. However, her wrestling career would only last a few months, as Emiko would go on to wrestle about 14 matches only, losing every single one of them. Despite the losses, the RCN promotion thought highly of her potential to one day be a star for them, but a few months after her debut, in her 15th match, she took a back suplex, hitting her head hard on the canvas. She remained unconscious and the match stopped for medical personnel to attend to her. She was rushed to a nearby hospital where she received emergency surgery on her brain. She was in a coma for approximately 9 days before she died from her injuries, which was bleeding from her brain. She was just 23 years old at the time of her death. And up next, we have Nicole Bass. Nicole Bass was a champion bodybuilder and mainly known for her appearances on the Howard Stern Show over the years. She stood in at 6 foot 2 and 240 pounds of pure muscle, and because of this, she made the transition from bodybuilding to pro wrestling. In 1998, she debuted in ECW, but in 1999, Vince McMahon took notice of her and brought her to WWE. However, Nicole Bass's run with the company was short-lived, as she only lasted a few months before getting fired. After she got fired, she filed a $120 million lawsuit for SA against Vince McMahon's WWE that led to a circus of a trial in which things didn't go her way. She then left wrestling and she had her own business wrestling guys with fetishes in their apartments. It was truly bizarre and there's even videos online that she released of her apartment wrestling where she wrestled much smaller men in a lewd and crude way. Nicole Bass also had a fair share of legal troubles as in the year 2000, she spent a night in jail after biting a New York police officer who tried to break up a fight that she was involved in. And in 2015, she was arrested for shoplifting in Queens, New York. In mid-2017, Nicole Bass was rushed to a New York hospital and put on life support after being found unconscious at her apartment. While she was in hospital, she suffered a massive heart attack that left her brain dead and she was taken off life support and passed away a short time later. She was 52 years old at the time of her death. And now we're moving on to the deepest part of the iceberg, Tier 1, with our first entry on Tier 1 being Ashley Massaro. Ashley Masara was a professional wrestler in WWE in 2005 until 2008, and she was a former women's champion. Her ex-boyfriend, Paul London, accused Vince McMahon of S-ing Masaro on multiple occasions, and he said that she would constantly cry to him because Vince propositioned her to fly alone on a private jet with him many times. However, this was not the only despicable thing that Vince McMahon did to Ashley Masaro. During Masara's time in the company, she was part of a four-member group that traveled to Afghanistan, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. Masaro, along with Maria Canellis, Ron Simmons, and Jimmy Hart, traveled to the Middle East with the US Army. At the time of her trip, she became the victim of grape. After returning from the trip, she informed the WWE doctor about the incident, and the doctor told Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon then immediately called her and told her to not publicly disclose the incident. Masaro has said in interviews that she agreed because she was completely traumatized at that point, and she also said that Vince convinced her to keep quiet because if she came out with her grape, then it would ruin the relationship between WWE and the US military. This is again another instance of Vince McMahon putting money and reputation over true justice and people. She also said that Vince McMahon didn't offer any therapy or counseling of any sort, and she did not get any support from WWE with regards to her grape. She left the company soon after this incident, and in 2016, Masaro joined a class action lawsuit against WWE, alleging that the company concealed risks of injury that caused them neurological damage. In this lawsuit, Masaro also told her story of grape at a US military base during a WWE tour of Kuwait, and she went into detail about how Vince McMahon persuaded her not to speak up about this incident. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2018. 
This whole ordeal sent Masaru into a deep depression and just a year after the lawsuit was dismissed, she did not show up for work at the radio station that she was working at, prompting another DJ to fill in for her and the next morning paramedics responded to a rescue call and discovered Masaru unresponsive in her New York home. They transported her to the hospital and there she was pronounced dead and it turned out that Ashi Masaru had taken her own life. And up next we have Sable's boobs popping out. In the history of WWE, one of its most important periods is what's known as the Attitude Era. Lasting from 1997 to about 2002, the Attitude Era saw the promotion move from the kid-friendly content to something more edgy for older audiences. There was many infamous segments during the Attitude Era and one of these segments was on the February 16, 1998 edition of WWF Raw where Luna Vachon and Sable were involved in a brawl. During this scuffle, Sable's boobs literally popped out of her top. Sable realized this but she continued to brawl with Luna Vachon. The fans and the commentators were going crazy at the sight of it and Sable's melons were exposed until feed cut off due to the wardrobe malfunction. And up next we have Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee was a professional wrestler best known for her time in WWE where she was the winner of the 6th season of WWE's competition Tough Enough, winning herself a 1 year $250,000 contract. Sadly, things didn't really work out for her in WWE and she was released after this 1 year contract. One thing that was good from her experience in WWE was that she married WWE wrestler Wesley Blake who used to perform as part of the trio Forgotten Sons. Him and Sarah had two children together. In 2022, Sarah sadly took her own life at 30 years old and according to the autopsy report, she had alcohol and pills in her system at the time of her death. The autopsy report suggested bruising on her head and body may be due to the falls she had suffered while heavily intoxicated. The police also reported that Lee left letters of intent at the scene before she passed. And up next we have the Lady of Silence. Juana Barraza, known by her wrestling name, La Dama del Silencio, which in English translates to the Lady of Silence, was a Mexican professional wrestler who was most active in the 1980s. The Lady of Silence had a very rough upbringing. She was born in a rural area north of Mexico City. Her mother was an alcoholic who reportedly pimped her out to a man in exchange for three beers when she was a minor. Because of this, the Lady of Silence hated her mother. She then got into wrestling as she worked as a popcorn vendor by day and a luchadora by night but after she retired from the ring, her true nature came out as she became a serial killer. Beginning in 2003, the Lady of Silence would gain entrance to the homes of elderly women by pretending to help carry in groceries or claiming to be sent by the government for medical help. Once inside, she would pick a weapon like a set of stockings or a telephone cord and strangle them. Though the crimes didn't seem to be motivated by financial gain, she would often look through her victims' houses for something to take with her as a sort of memorabilia and over the next few years, the Lady of Silence killed almost 50 women before the police finally caught a break in the case. The Lady of Silence took the life of an 82 year old woman with a stethoscope. After she was leaving the scene, the woman who was renting a room in the victim's home returned and found the body and she immediately called the police. With the help of the witness, the police were able to arrest the Lady of Silence before she left the area. During questioning, the Lady of Silence confessed to having with at least one woman, stating that she committed the crime out of a sense of anger at elderly women in general and she explained that her hatred was rooted in feelings toward her own mother. With the evidence they collected, police were able to charge the Lady of Silence with 16 different murders but she is believed to have killed up to 49 people. Though the Lady of Silence continued to claim that she had only been responsible for the one that she got caught for, she was convicted and sentenced to 759 years in prison. And up next we have Scarlett Bordeaux essayed by a fan. In 2019, future WWE star Scarlett Bordeaux wrestled in a six woman tag team match in Mexico for the Mexican promotion AAA. She was going about her business in the match when suddenly she was pulled back by a fan who thought that he had the right to put his hands all over her and he rubbed her body in a creepy way. This was not part of the show and completely crossed the line. This incident went viral on Twitter with Scarlett Bordeaux saying that it's never okay to touch a performer without their consent and she didn't realize what was happening in the moment and one of her tag partners Lady Shawnee actually saved her from the situation of which she thanked her. This situation should never have gotten this far but thankfully Scarlett had someone who could break up the situation. And up next we have the death of Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth is without a doubt wrestling's most famous valet. 
Sure, others came along who were more sexual and shocking, but Elizabeth didn't need that. Her gimmick was that of the shy and quiet girl next door, who might be timid but who stood by her man and even physically got involved to protect him when she had to. Miss Elizabeth's most famous relationship was with the Macho Man Randy Savage, but not many people know that towards the end of her life she was actually dating Lex Luger, and these two were clearly not for each other, as the basis of their relationship was pills, alcohol, and lots of fighting. Luger was even arrested for beating up Elizabeth while they were both messed up on pills and alcohol, giving her two black eyes, a bump on the head, and a busted lip. Luger was released on bail, but less than two weeks after this incident, Miss Elizabeth overdosed while she was with Lex Luger and died. Fans found this suspicious and they came up with a conspiracy theory that something more sinister was at play and Luger was actually the one behind Elizabeth's death. And up next we have Janet Wolf. Janet Wolf stands out as one of the youngest wrestlers to die in the ring. Wolf is the adopted daughter of wrestling promoter Billy Wolf, who also trained her. Billy Wolf training Janet and becoming her adopted father went hand in hand as Billy needed to become Janet's legal guardian in order to train her as she was 16 years old at the time. Due to her association with such prominent players in the industry, Janet Wolf seemed destined to have a long career in wrestling. Wolf's final match took place on July 27, 1951 against Ella Walding in Ohio. During this match, Walding slammed the undersized Wolf on the mat with authority, which according to the coroner likely ruptured her stomach. However, she wrestled for a few minutes before collapsing on the ring apron. Wolf was rushed to the hospital but died the next day. In addition to the ruptured stomach, the coroner found Wolf to have sustained a brain hemorrhage due to a blood clot sustained in the days leading up to her death. And now we're moving on to the deepest and darkest part of the iceberg, the final entry, which is Daphne. The wrestling world is no stranger to unsung heroes who lay the foundation for future generations with their hard work, talent and perseverance. One of these unsung heroes was WCW legend Daphne. While many fans are not aware of her contributions to the wrestling industry, she was an important fixture for WCW and TNA. However, in TNA, she suffered many, many concussions. The safety of wrestlers in TNA became a huge issue when Daphne suffered a career-ending concussion and received no support from the company. This concussion would see Daphne not clear to wrestle and the company coldly released her without helping any of her medical expenses and Daphne was never able to wrestle again. And in September of 2021, Daphne streamed a live video through Instagram in which she read an unaliving note, holding what appeared to be a pistol and requested that her brain be donated for CTE testing. Concerned fans took to social media to support Daphne and law enforcement was dispatched to her address. Law enforcement found her dead from a self-inflicted gunshot to the chest. Her death was ruled as a self-deletion. Thank you for watching this video. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? If you enjoyed it, please check out our other videos and also please like, share, comment and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye.